What is going on everybody? Welcome to Blind Power. Today I want to give you my recap of some cool stuff I've seen. Today, Tuesday, the first day of the conference. So I'm going to go through my notes that I wrote during each uh, conference event. And uh, I'm going to pick out from the list and show you my favorites. So the first one I want to talk about here, the first uh, company is APH. So today APH talked about some really cool braille products that I will say that I actually want to see it in person. I, I, I want to go to ATIA in January if it's open to the public and actually get to use this because I write an app that teaches braille yet I am not proficient in braille. So I feel like this tool would be great to learn braille as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the Mantis Q40. It's a 40 cell braille display. The braille display connects to Bluetooth so you can connect up to six devices. It has a QWERTY keyboard so no uh, UEB keyboard style so you don't have dots one through six and then all those uh, weird layout that you have with a braille display. No, it's simply a QWERTY keyboard which makes it easier to type. Uh, it has all the stuff you used to from a Bluetooth keyboard, but then on the bottom you have a 40 cell braille display. That is awesome. I feel like that's something that I'm surprised it hasn't been out for years. Like, wow, that's 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 a uh, innovation that we should have had a long time ago. So the specs for this uh, braille display: you have a 16 gig internal storage. You have a expandable SD card up to 64 gigs and also you have Bluetooth 4.2 however the only thing is it won't work with hotel Wi-Fi and also you can download the OTA updates so that's a plus it also uh, doesn't work on iOS 14 and that's expected because iOS 14 is a beta but they say that they're working on that so that's Expected, but the device is actually really good. Uh, you know, it may have things like you can't connect to hotel Wi-Fi. It only supports uh, WPA personal, so the personal authentication. But it's pretty cool. You know, 40 cell. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's not as portable as the other product I'm going to talk about now. But keyboard over portability, like Braille keyboard or over you know QWERTY keyboard. I take QWERTY keyboard any day. Like, I, it's not just because I, I used to use the Braille keyboards like when, when I was a kid, and then I just, I grew out of it. I just didn't like that. I didn't like having to switch keyboard styles. So, that's awesome that you, you now have the option to have a QWERTY keyboard and a Braille display all in one system. So, the Chameleon is actually really cool because it's got some unique things. For example, it has a case. It says it has a three color, three color cases. You have teal, purple, and pomegranate. So it does have USB-C. Actually, both of these I believe have USB-C. So you have the normal UEB Braille layout. That's one through six. You know your Braille display layout. So they are waiting for Google for uh, this to work on Android so it works on iOS, Windows, and maybe Linux. They said that they they said yes, but I you know I know Linux it depends on distribution and stuff so the nice thing about this product though is that it's pocketable. You can actually put it in your pocket and take it with you anywhere you want. The person uh, giving the uh, tutorial on this product uh, with APH actually said that he was looking for his chameleon I, I that name is so yeah chameleon um, he he said that he was looking for his chameleon braille display and it was in his pocket the whole time it was so tiny that well there it is in his pocket that's pretty cool that it fits in your pocket the, you know I I guess that for a pocketable display, it may be more comfortable to have uh, the UEB because it takes less room, the UEB keyboard style versus the computer braille keyboard, so normal QWERTY keyboard. 
So this also doesn't support iOS 14 beta 2. I expected it. it's a beta, so that you know they were very clear on on what what it's working on on all the betas and stuff. The tech support for both of these are through APH. The reason why I say that is because the fact that they are partnering with Humanware to create these products. So as expected, you know the Humanware gets a lot of partnerships, including uh, APH itself for the previous Bard. What was it, Bard? You know, was it wasn't Bard. Yeah, it was Bard. But I don't know if it, it was it APH themselves. Well, anyway, Bard Mobile. Uh, uh, they partnered with Humanware for the uh, Bard Reader back in the day, and APH themselves partnered with them for the old school CD player Victor Reader uh, back in the day as well. So Humanware gets a lot of partnerships for these type of products, so that's pretty cool. So we're going to talk about Chrome and Chrome OS. This is actually one of the platforms that I say that anybody who, just a little thing about Chrome and Chrome, like Chrome OS itself uh, from a, you know, a computer science major standpoint here. This is the thing. Chrome OS is just what the average computer user needs. If you're checking email, you're doing average tasks, you don't need a window, full Windows OS. If you don't need to download stuff, you're just doing online, this is great. And now there's even less of an excuse to not go for a Chromebook because now they're taking accessibility to a further level. So let's see, let's see what they have to offer here. So Chrome OS has some new keystrokes for uh, n for lists. So you can do a new list, uh, phonetic search, Chrome Vox automatically switches languages based on website locale. So this is cool. So with Chrome OS, if the web page is in Spanish or uh, French, whatever the case may be, it'll automatically switch and it'll start speaking in that language. Unlike other screen readers such as JAWS and NVDA and VoiceOver, well no, VoiceOver does it. JAWS and NVDA, they don't. They just start speaking weird because they don't speak that language because you haven't changed the locale. So that's cool. That's a cool thing that Google did. I hope they bring this to TalkBack as well because Vox is a variation of TalkBack. So the Chrome browser automatically generates tagged PDFs. So accessible PDFs. So tagged PDFs means that you can now have accessible PDFs. Uh, it doesn't matter what the PDF is, it'll generate it and it'll make it accessible. So that's cool. Before, I guess it would generate unaccessible PDFs. So it's powered by common common look. So it's powered by common look. Uh, common look. Uh, you know, this, it, they had a little video recording of the CEO saying why they use them. Uh, I haven't done further research on Common Look. However, that's cool that Google partnered with another company. That's very rare because Google has great AI and great things. I guess it was feasible. It was more feasible for them to go with a company that already had this implemented in a, in another way. That's cool. So Chrome browser now has image detection. So you go to the menu bar and you can actually say like, okay, so detect this image and it'll actually put it against Google's AI and it'll tell you what the image contains. And I actually asked how websites can get this uh, implemented and they have the, they have a framework which is what Chrome used to do this. I asked them because of my company that I'm working on, my uh, platform, which I have yet to announce on here. So I'm gonna keep it kind of hush hush until I announce it officially. But if you have a web page, you can use the Google Lens API um, to do image detection. That is how they did it with the Google Lens API. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go on to Humanware. Okay, Humanware. So I could have gone to those another conference uh, meeting. There was the Amazon one that I could have I could have been like, oh, you know, let's do that. Uh, yeah, I could have been like, oh, that would have been more important. It could have been, I could have covered more stuff, but I'm going to be honest with you. I am a Humanware fanboy. Let's just admit it. I am a Humanware fanboy. I love their products. They are awesome. So they announced a couple things that I'm going to go ahead and say. I actually left before they talked about Braille, 
because you know the only thing they had was like the the bigger model of the uh, brilliant they had a they had I think it was brilliant 14 plus and it's it's mainly like some smaller features and I I don't know like this year when it comes to certain products there wasn't any uh, major improvements so I just kind of covered the big changes and the things that uh, I felt would be productive also I left early so that I could film this video so all right so they actually went over the explore 8 5 and reveal 16i so the reveal 16 and 16i is pretty cool they talked about them a little bit there eh, it's nice now my favorite uh, is the connect 12 they did talk about it so there's some future some uh, new features with all the products that contain the prodigy ui that includes the connect 12 the reveal 16i i don't know if the reveal 16 has it i know the explore 5 and 8 uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't think they have it, uh, but you know, they they have some new features. So let's get to it. So with the Prodigy UI, they have you can now download books uh, with Bookshare uh, directly from the device. Previously, I think you had to sideload them. So you now get access to the app list of your apps. So new app access UI for Android apps. You also get the new quick access UI. Uh, so in quick access, so you can basically have a list of your favorite apps, kind of like pinned apps, uh, just like so you see all your favorite apps that you use the most. Basically making it so you don't have to go into the Android interface like you had to before. So that's that for the Prodigy UI. For the Victor Reader Trek, there's quite a bit of stuff here and actually, they hinted, I, I don't know if it was on purpose or they indirectly hit in like a, a little hint, but I'll talk about that toward the end. So, the, with the Victorator Trek, we now have a redesigned GPS. So they're using a new map platform, they're not using TomTom Tom anymore, they're using something called Here Maps. So, no more TomTom. Tom. Um, TomTom's gone from the human, from the device. Not yet! Uh, that'll be that's an update coming up toward the end of the year. They don't have a specific date yet. However, they did say that that is coming. So I can't wait. He demoed it, and uh, there's quite a good amount of features here. So you can virtually explore. So you can walk around using uh, four, six, eight, and two, like you had to before, just your normal book navigation. You can actually navigate virtual streets without leaving your home and explore what's around you. They've been testing this for a few months now, so that's cool. So you now get offline GPS. You will get offline GPS navigation, which is a nice addition. And here's the part that I tell you is a hint that they said. Possible GPS for Galileo. Remember last year and at 2018 as well, they kept saying Galileo is going to bring precise GPS. You know, they had to kind of sort of apologize and say that why they didn't go to Galileo. They say that it requires dual band GPS and that requires new hardware. <clears throat> Very loud. <clears throat> It requires a new Victor Reader Trek, therefore a new device. Hint, hint. And that couldn't have been a stronger hint that I gathered there. That was very obvious that there could be a second generation Victor Reader. Um, so that'd be nice. Maybe add some Android to that as well. Maybe give us a little uh, app store to you know download like Audible and stuff. And oh man. Uh, I'm just dreaming at that point, but like for real, yeah, second gen Victor Reader Trek, actually technically be third, no, second, yeah, um, it, you know, with a, a dual band GPS uh, satellite in there, you know, that'll make it nice so that we can actually have some like centimeters away accurate GPS. So Microsoft and Microsoft accessibility. So Microsoft, it, it was basically just going over how to use the products. The only thing interesting that I saw there was the this website that I actually signed up to where you actually get to uh, 
you get compensated and you also get to use uh, different devices and stuff like it, they have you use their software that they have you get to test out different software and maybe different hardware by Microsoft uh, it's all sorts of accessibility testing it's a it's a way of testing accessibility uh, by people who use accessibility so testing accessibility by accessibility users so the website is a uh, accessible by accessibility the mobile website is not is not that great okay accessibility user research collective dot org so what that does is you can sign up there's a uh, I think there's like two or three different uh, things going on right now different researchers I signed up for two out of the three that I found uh, that I would like to be part of I replied to them it, you know I guess they said to contact them with the research studies that we want to be part of so I did that that was pretty cool um, that's the only like new thing that I heard them talk about was the research collective that they're doing so Microsoft has gone a long way in accessibility you know they bragged a little bit about how much narrator improved yes it did it's actually fairly decent I would still go NVDA over narrator but that's just me it's, it's great though if, if you got a laptop and you can't use any other screen reader you can go to work and do your job kinda like you can do most things with uh, narrator this it's not comfortable but it's doable so and the other thing that I actually didn't know was was the uh, Satya CEO uh, the CEO Satya from Microsoft actually worked at an accessibility position uh, previously uh, within Microsoft so uh, he was actually working as a C before being a CEO so he was actually working uh, in the accessibility department before being a CEO. So that's why Microsoft is so accessibility driven uh, 2015, 2016 forward technically. Uh, so that's awesome. So that's basically like all the stuff I gathered today. And that's kind of my recap uh, for what I did today. All the stuff that I learned in the meetings. There is there's the Amazon thing right now going on as I'm filming, but Amazon I feel like they're doing pretty well. Like they're one of the most accessible companies. Like you know the Amazon Echo devices, just so I don't say the, the keyword, they're doing great. I did join also uh I did go into the uh, exhibit hall and this morning I was like the exhibit hall is only you know a, 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 like a list a directory but no I was wrong I actually went in and I, in the morning I was like why is it this is weird and then the afternoon I had a little more time I went in and I dove into the uh, uh, exhibition hall and you can actually join like uh, rooms uh, with zoom so you can ask questions I went into the Google uh, exhibitors hall booth and I actually asked the question that I answered earlier about like what they use for the image detection and they use uh, the Google Lens API so you know I'm gonna be asking questions and I have one person that replied to me with an interview so I might interview one person this week I, I, I asked like five or six people to interview but so far I've gotten reply from one person so hopefully we get some nice interviews this week of uh, some uh, successful people in the uh, accessibility assistive technology industry so all right i hope you guys enjoyed this recap uh also stay tuned to the 5 30 live stream every day i'm actually going to set up a zoom meeting and people can join in and we can discuss uh different things and uh that'll be a nice little uh, activity we'll have going on every day at 5.30 EST. So stay tuned on Twitter. I will post the links to the uh, Zoom meeting there as well. So, all right. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and remember to enable the notification bell to get all notifications of blind power uploads. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.